5 things you didn't already know about the new Logitech MX Creative Console. Yes, yes, people, what's good? It's man like Jamma. We're out here with a brand new Logitech MX Creative Console. Now, luckily, I got my hands on it a month before it just released today, as you see in this video. So I've had a little bit of time to have a little play with it, get to know what it can do, get to know what it can't do, and kind of try and put that into five key points that you probably will care about. Now, first thing I started thinking when I saw this is it's a stream deck from the guys at Logitech. But I'd say it's a bit different to a Stream Deck because a Stream Deck is for gamers and streamers, but you can sometimes use it for content creation. Whereas the Logitech MX Creative Console, you'll see in a bit, seems to be made for content creation primarily, but you can also use it for a little bit of OBS, a little bit of streaming, and whatever productivity tasks you need to do on your computer. Now the first thing you guys need to know about is the design because Logitech have done something different with these. Normally you get the things coming together but they've made two individual pieces of product which both come in the same package. You get the little dial pad which has got the big dial on the front, it's got like a little scroll wheel here and it's got a couple of other buttons on it as well. And then you've got the button pad which is literally just buttons and is the closest kind of thing to an Elgato Stream Deck. Now just to focus on the little button pad at the moment, this thing obviously has nine screens within each of the buttons. Basically just like an Elgato Stream Deck or like a Loop Deck Live Loop Deck, whatever the thing is called, if you know about them thing there. You plug it in via USB-C and that's how this is powered. Um, these are all the buttons that you can customize to whatever you want. And you've got two little buttons at the bottom which are for different pages of these buttons. I can't remember how much pages you can have, but yeah, you can have a couple in it. Now the dial pad is a little bit more saucy because not only does it have a nice stepless dial, it's got the scroll at the top and it's got four buttons around the front face. Now second thing you guys need to know is the connectivity of these two here. Now the button pad, this thing connects via USB-C directly into whatever PC or whatever you're using kind of thing. You can use a USB-C to USB-A adapter, use that as well. Um, it doesn't take that much bandwidth, so it shouldn't really matter if you use a USB 2.0 cable. But um, yeah, the cable essentially has to power all of the screens underneath the buttons and yeah, you know, transfer a little bit of data to and from this and the computer, nice and simple. Now the connectivity on the dial pad is a little piece different because this is actually wireless. It's got two little AAA batteries in there. Not sure how long it lasts. If I do find out how long it's supposed to last, I'll put that somewhere in the video here. But yeah, this connects via Bluetooth. You hold the back button down, it goes into pairing mode, and then it automatically comes up with a prompt on any nearby devices that can connect via Bluetooth. And it's also compatible with the Logitech Bolt receiver, which is the same thing that all of these yes, yes, MX yes. products uses like the MX Keys S and you know the MX Mice and all them kind of things there so yeah it's definitely Logitech workspace ready. Now the third thing you guys got to know about is the application that basically gets these things running. Now if you connect these and you don't use the application you get limited like usability out of both of them. Well, you get zero usability out of the button pad, but out of the dial pad, you've got the ability to use the wheel as a horizontal scroll wheel, and you can use the little um, scroll thing up here as a vertical scroll wheel. So that's automatically in, and I think these are automatically defaulted to redo and undo or undo and redo, escape, and this button doesn't work unless you're using the software. Now I am about to show you the software, but bear in mind I'm using the beta version of the software. Logitech have told me that this software may be a little bit clunky until the final release on release day, which is now as you're watching this video. So if I do see a lot of changes, I might do a little update video to say the software is better at this or better at that, or it's worse at this and worse at that, hopefully not. Um, so yeah, let's get into the software and see what's really good. All right, people then, so this is the Logi Options software. As you can see, all my other Logitech equipment is there. Like if I click into them, um, you've got all that kind of stuff going on where you can customize them as you want. Same with the mouse that I'm literally using right now. You can customize that as you want. And I like how they've kept that consistency with the creative dial pad where you can customize stuff like the sensitivity of the roller and the dial. Um, you can 
you know, see which um, computers the Ting has in memory. Um, and it's the same situation with the keypad. Like you can change the brightness here. Um, you can go to settings and remove the device or check for an update, them kind of things there. But what we're gonna focus on right now is the customized key section because that's where it gets tricky. All right, people them. So this is what the button customization thing looks like. At the bottom here where you can see the mouse, you can switch between the keypad and the dial pad on the fly. Once you connect both of these to the Logi option software, you've got a set of default options that both of them do or they both have been set up to do. Now that's all cool. However, what I think is really cool is the fact that depending on what application you've got open, those options can be set to change on the fly kind of thing just depending on what application you've got open and active so let's say you open i don't know um obs you've got buttons to start the recording stop the recording um lots of shortcuts for that kind of thing if you open google chrome you've got all the google chrome shortcuts open a new tab go back a um tab or back a web page for the web page all them kind of things there you get me or like if you open microsoft teams or zoom you've got things for hiding your webcam showing your webcam changing the scene picking up a call putting down a call putting yourself on mute them kind of contextual things there that you would need in specific applications now again i stress this is beta software so even though it can see all the applications on my computer if i go into one like discord for example there's no profiles for this app yet because this is a beta and maybe companies don't even know about it or they haven't finished making the profiles for it. Um, you can start off with a blank profile and make your own Discord profile. So if there are any Discord shortcuts, keyboard shortcuts that you know or keyboard macros that you know kind of thing, you can set these to each of the buttons on the dial pad or the keypad and save that profile, which you can export, save, send to your friends, upload kind of thing. So it could be a community thing where people are making their own keypad shortcuts and stuff like that until the companies have their official support for the Logic Tech um, Creative Kit right here and you know give their own profiles that you can download. Now using the keypad, let's go on to CapCut shortcuts. Now you can see there are no CapCut shortcuts at the moment. I had to select CapCut in my computer and make a blank profile. So that means the keypad will automatically use these shortcuts that I'm setting whenever it detects that I've opened CapCut and you know, I've actually got CapCut open in front of me that I'm using kind of thing. Um, and it's pretty much simple to use. Like let's say for example, in CapCut, um, you know, I'm constantly splitting a track. That's control and B um, to split a track. So what you will do is you go to keyboard, you'll go to keyboard shortcut, you'll drag that to whichever button you want it to go onto. And it's actually coming up on the keypad in real time. Um, I'm gonna call this one cut. And then I'm gonna record the keyboard shortcut, which is control and B. And I'm gonna click save. And there we go. Now I've got cut. On one button press so it's still be doing control and b i can just hit that button real quick and you know i'm cutting up the track i'm splitting the track all them things there so obviously you can do that for copy and paste and redo and undo and all them other kind of video editing shortcuts that you might use if you do photoshop editing and them kind of things there i'm sure there's also shortcuts and macros that you guys use for that i don't use photoshop so i wouldn't know about them thing there but yeah, obviously there's bare different things you can do. You can make other keyboard shortcuts. Um, even if you're, I don't know, you're in maybe Google Chrome, you want back, back a page kind of thing. You'll just press backspace, record backspace here, and then you just call it back <laughs> kind of thing. And now we've got a back button, say for example, if it was in Google Chrome or a web browser. So um, yeah, nah, in that fact, it's pretty much simple. If you want to set up some stuff on another page, you just click add page down here. And now let me just drag something random here. Um, screen brightness, let's just drag screen brightness. So on page two, you've got screen brightness. And if I click the page button, or I'm have to click it here first of all, you've got, um, what you may call it, cut and back. So yeah, you've got two different things on two different pages. And that, let me see how many pages you can make actually. Let's, let's just keep clicking and see what's going on. Let's see if it stops me. Damn, 10 pages. I don't know how many pages do you guys even need fam? 15 pages you can make 15 pages max so nine times 15 i'm not even sure what that is something that's 15 less than 150 i guess 
But um, yeah, that's how many shortcuts you can create on this thing. At that point, it just gets a bit tedious because man's going to like, you don't know what page number you're on. There's no indicator to show you what page number you're on. Now, number four that I also want to show you whilst we're in the app is the app store, fam. Um, the marketplace, for example. All right, so this is the little app store that they got going on. Um, I guess it's in beta as well because the app is in beta at the moment. You've got OS's, all OS's, Mac OS or Windows OS. No Linux support, unfortunately, at the moment. Um, and I know you Linux gang, um, you're there, fam. I know you're there. So, yeah, be aware of that. You probably will hack away into making it work anyway because I know what you guys are like. But, yeah, boom. You got all these options here that you can install to make them compatible with the Logi um, keys or with the little dial pads, Apple Music stuff, Photoshop stuff. You got a lot of Adobe stuff here, um, OBS Studio stuff, which I already installed. So you got all that. And then you also got profiles, um, which are for specific applications. So for example, with all these profiles, they will set up the keys and the dial pad in a way that they are just perfectly suited for these applications. But with these plugins, what happens here is that they've just made specific plugins or specific um, actions in those applications, which you yourself have to assign to specific keys or specific functions that are on the dial pad or the keypad itself. So these things here, they're cool. But, you know, it's just telling you that basically you can, you know, do lots of stuff, but you have to actually kind of port it over yourself kind of thing. I don't know if that makes sense, but basically these are cool. Like it's cool to have Twitch integration and stuff like that, but you still have to move the Twitch integration buttons and all those features over to specific buttons yourself. Whereas if there was a profile here that just said Twitch, all of that would have been taken care of you for you kind of thing it would just have every screen doing a different thing for twitch and all that would have been sorted so that's the kind of difference between these two places on the marketplace and again it's all in beta so i'm hoping to see a lot more profiles when this thing is actually released and hopefully a lot more plugins as well for people that like to tinker around and finally number five it's the performance fam these things are working as well as i would have thought they would work in the first place the only thing is they don't save the settings to the devices themselves. So if I want to use these devices on my laptop, like I want to move from my desktop to my laptop, I have to set up those profiles again on the laptop, which again isn't too bad because I can export the profiles from here and send them over to my laptop with a little memory stick or whatever, email, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I can set it up real quick. It's just, you know, it would be wicked if there was like, maybe I could sign in on my profiles from here would automatically appear on my laptop or whatever devices I want to use the MX creative console stuff on kind of thing, isn't it? Um, but apart from that, yeah, performance is good. Build quality feels good. And to anyone that loves to tinker around and set their shortcuts in these kind of little shortcut boxes, it's golden fam. Like once you're set up, you're good to go and it will probably even be hard for you to edit or make content without them once you've gotten used to them. I don't think that the learning curve is that steep. It's very similar to the Loop Deck, um, Loop Deck Live kind of thing, which has a lot more dials on it. But yeah, again, you know, it depends what people need, what kind of fits your office space a lot more. Uh, some people are left-handed, so they'd rather have all the dials on the left. I prefer the dial on this instead of the dials that are, these are stepped, step full dials or step dials on the loop deck whereas this is like a stepless smooth slide on the dial pad from logitech so um yeah couple differences i like what they've done here i would just like to see a lot more integration with other profiles and more plugins as this comes out and you know people start developing more stuff for it but anyway that's that for now let me know if you have any questions about what this can do in the comment section below. Like and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.